Hi, welcome to our fourth video for Medford Family Network's special series, Pandemic Parenting, The Doctor is In. Our topic today is families learning about feelings together with more ideas for helping our children with their extra intense feelings during this pandemic. I'm Debbie Weinstock Savoy, a licensed psychologist and parent of three with over 30 years of experience consulting with parents and early childhood educators about the challenges and joys of taking care of young children. Raising children is a gigantic job, even under the best of circumstances. Now we are living in extraordinary times and what was already hard may be even harder. In response, Medford Family Network has, is finding new ways to connect with and support families. Parents have been contacting us with many concerns, including this question, how can I help my young child with all the extra intense feelings they're having right now? In today's video, we'll share several family activities that put together the various skills that we've covered in the previous videos, learning how to recognize and name feelings and learning how to calm down. We all know how important adults are as role models for children. Children learn from watching what we do even more than they learn from listening to what we say. That's one of the scary things about being a parent. And we have all had moments when we wish our children would not imitate us. But we do the best we can. And here's the thing. It's actually great that we're not perfect. It teaches our children some very important ideas. People don't have to be perfect. Everyone is still learning and everyone makes mistakes. What matters is that we try again, we try to learn from our mistakes and do better. Sometimes you can turn yourself into an even more effective role model by using the technique of sports casting. What is sports casting? Well, imagine a radio host or a podcaster announcing a sports game. They describe the play by play as objectively and clearly as possible. We mentioned sports casting in video three as one helpful technique for naming children's feelings and maybe helping them to calm down. In this version of sports casting, we're describing what we're doing. We break down the process of managing feelings into steps noticing and naming the feeling, calming down, making choices about how to solve the problem or to express myself. And by describing what we're doing, while we're doing it, we focus children's attention on the process. We uh, shine a spotlight on each step. Here's an example. Imagine that you're sitting at the dinner table trying to open a jar. Step one, you notice that you're having a feeling and you name that feeling. Ugh, this jar is stuck. It's hard to open. I'm getting really frustrated. Step two, you identify your goal, which is to calm down. Okay, I want to calm down. This isn't such a big deal. It's just a stuck jar. Step three, you describe the way to calm down that you're gonna try, and it's especially helpful to pick a method that you think your child could learn to use and that would be helpful for them, as well as something you can use. Hmm, what will help me to calm down? I'm gonna take three deep breaths, or could be count to 10, or it could be go look out the window. Step four, you do it. You model the calming technique. 
one breath. Two. Three. Step five. You model problem solving, thinking of options and choosing something to do. Maybe even modeling asking for help. Children love to be our helpers in situations like this. Oh, I feel better. Now, how can I get this jar open? Uh, maybe I can run hot water over the lid or uh, I can tap on the sides with a spoon. Maybe I can get someone strong to help me to use this technique. Think ahead of times, about times during your everyday life that you could sportscast a situation involving emotions. Personally, I find this easier to do when I'm not actually too upset. <laughs> Sports casting helps children pay attention to the steps of managing feelings, but we all still need reminders to use those steps in daily life. The image of a traffic light can become a helpful visual reminder of the steps. Instead of a traffic light for vehicles, think of this as a traffic light for feelings, for emotions, for behavior. It's really easy to teach children of many ages the basic ideas of a traffic light through play with themselves, with their toy cars. Red means stop. Yellow means slow down or be careful. Green means go. An emotion traffic light connects words that remind us how to manage feelings to the traffic light colors. So, for example, red can mean stop whatever you're doing, maybe even take a break if you need to. Yellow can mean slow down or calm down and think it through. Green can mean go. Now that you've calmed down, thought through the problem, come up with different ways to solve it, Pick an option to try. Now to use this at home, you're gonna to wanna to create a large version of a traffic light that you can put up on your wall. And as usual, you can Google images of a motion traffic light for children. There are many versions you can download. Here's an example of one that you can buy in a poster version from an educational supplies website, freespirit.com. But it's also really easy to make your own preferably again with your child's help. Then you can customize it for your child and your family using the language that works best for all of you. In addition to the big reminder words of stop, slow or calm, and go, you can add other useful reminders to your traffic light poster using language or pictures. For example, a word that reminds everyone of a way to calm down breathe, or a reminder to look at the calming chart, or to use the calming treasure box that we talked about in video three. One more idea, especially if you have a child who needs some extra help or extra practice learning how to recognize other people's feelings. You can provide that extra practice in a playful way with a variation on the feelings charade game that we talked about in video two. Remember that game where each person acts out a feeling and the other family members have to guess that feeling. Now we know that feelings get communicated, not just through the words that we use, but through all of our nonverbal behaviors, such as tones of voice, facial expressions, and how we hold and move our body. When you play the charades game, you can vary the rules about how to act out the feeling, each time putting the focus on one of the ways that feelings get expressed. Maybe the focus is on facial expressions. 
You can only make faces, but you have to stay silent and hold your body still. Maybe the focus is on body movements and posture. The actor turns their back on everyone, so their face is hidden and they just move their bodies in ways that express their feeling. An extra silly version is to hide behind something and use your voice, but no words. You can only make sounds in the tone of voice that you will express your feeling. We hope you find some of these ideas useful for your child and family. And remember that whenever we learn anything new, it will take time and lots of practice. For links to other useful resources, please go to the Medford Family Network Facebook page. That's where you'll also find our calendar of activities and contact information for the program's director, Marie Cassidy. Let us know if you have any questions or concerns or would like to learn more about services for families with young children in the Medford, Massachusetts area. And don't forget to follow us right here on Medford Family Network's YouTube channel, along with our wonderful playgroup leaders, Miss Andrea, Miss Cindy, and Miss Bernadette. Thank you for joining us. We are all riding this Corona coaster together. With each other's help, we will get through these wild and crazy times. Meanwhile, remember that Medford Family Network is still here for you as a friend to know and a place to grow. Take care of yourselves and your families. <laughs>